morning and turn to first Kings turn to first Kings and turn to first Kings chapter 19 first Kings chapter 19 now first Kings chapter 19 and let's start reading with verse 1 first Kings chapter 19 verse 1 and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey under the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper, juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I am no better than my fathers. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on coals and uh, a course of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him, and said, Arise and eat, because thy journey is too great for thee. 
And he arose and did eat and drank and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Elijah. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the uh, children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, and thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets which the, with the sword. And I, even I alone, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand in the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mount, and broken pieces of the rock before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his mantle in his, his face in his mantle and went out and stood the entry of the cave. And behold, there was a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because of the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down thy altars and have slain thy prophets with a sword. And I, even I alone, and left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return into the way of the wilderness and Damascus, and when thou comest, anoint Haziel to be king over Samaria. Uh, Heavenly Father, on this morning I pray that you would bless your word as it was read, and as it is read this morning, I pray that it be read right and clear and plain. And Lord, I pray that this message this morning would encourage and strengthen the saved. And I pray this morning it will cause the unsaved to see their need of salvation and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved today. And Lord, we ask your blessing upon the service. In Jesus' name I pray and for his sake. Amen. Now this morning, I'm going to preach a message on uh, 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 why a person or things that make a person quit. Now I want you to notice there in, uh, in the verse of Elijah in chapter 19, I want you to know it. And verse 4, note in verse 4 it says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Now this morning I'm going to preach on the things that make a Christian quit. Things that make a Christian quit. Now I'm absolutely certain that every Christian at some time or another feels like quitting. Feels like quitting. And I mean just quitting and giving up and stop working for the Lord. You say, oh, Brother Bemis, you never feel like quitting. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I felt like quitting so many times that I can't even count how many times I felt like quitting. I just lost track of it. It comes natural. I believe uh, the only man that I know of in the Bible who never felt like quitting that I know of is the Apostle Paul. Every other Christian that I could see felt like quitting sometime or another in their ministry. And even the great saints, sometime or another, feel like quitting. Comes kind of regular like to you. Has some kind of habit. And this morning I'm going to preach on. Now I want to say this about quitting. You should never quit. You should never quit. You should never quit God. And you should never quit working for the Lord. And you should never give up for God Almighty. And yet it comes natural for people to give up. Do you know that in colleges today... You know, half the people that start college never finish college. They quit about the third year or the second year or the fourth year, but they never finish about half of them. Now, you know what God wants? God wants those kind of Christians that start and then finish. God doesn't want those that quit. Now, when I went to Bible college, I noticed that about halfway through Bible college, the first year would drop out. Half of the first year would drop out. 
We started uh, at Pensacola Bible Institute. I believe we started out with 26 students at Dr. Ruckman School, first year I was there. And I was in one of the first classes of 26 students. You know how many students graduated out of 26? 12. 12 out of 26 made it the full three years and graduated. Why? I come to the conclusion that a whole bunch of Christians give up and quit before the job's done. They give up and quit. They quit. They don't finish it. You know what God wants today? God wants some folks that will finish the job. It's like Bob Jones Sr. used to say. And he had a lot of great sayings. And one of his sayings was this. He used to say, finish the job. Finish the job. And some folks say, well, what does that mean? That means a whole lot nowadays because nobody wants to finish it. Have you ever been out and seen a brand new house somewhere? I went out and looked at 20 brand new houses. And you know some I can almost always pick out something that's not finished. In a brand new house, I can walk in that brand new house and look in there, and there's something right there out of a $60,000 home. Well, that's cheap nowadays. But a $100,000, well, that's not very much, a $200,000 home, and there's something right there that ain't finished. Ain't finished. What happened? The carpenters didn't finish the job. That is true, it just it's people out of the way. They get the thing right up to the very last thing, and then they get it up and they say, boy, they're just ready. And then they quit right there. What do they do? You know what loggers do? They quit, they get quit. Just before they get finished, they quit. That's human nature. Now what you should do is finish the job. Don't quit. This morning I want to preach on uh, things that make you quit. Number one, point number one is found in verse two. First Kings chapter 19 and look at verse two. Then Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also if I make not the life uh, as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Criticism. Criticism. Criticism makes folks quit. Now, Elijah got criticized by a woman. And that criticism that got Elijah made him quit. And it's not very long later and he's down there and says, Lord, let me die. Criticism. You know what criticism do? It'll make folks quit. Makes them give up and quit. And they just say, oh, I'm, I just don't want to do it anymore. You, see, how, you say, how do you find that out, Brother Beavis? I find it out the hard way. I find it out the hard way. You know one of the best ways to... Make somebody quit teaching Sunday school, come by and criticize them. Come by and criticize them. You know one of the best ways to make a Christian stop witnessing? Come by and criticize them. Come by and criticize them. You see some Christian witness, you want to make them stop witnessing? Criticize their witness. That'll do it every time. That'll do it every time. Many times it will. Why? Because you say, I, I got to the place to where I think criticism just come a notch. You got to sort of get hard to it. You got to get geared to it. I just take it for granted that somebody is going to criticize me. You can't please everybody. I just, I just, you say, Brother Beam, if they don't criticize you, oh, I bet you I get sued, preacher, about every three or four weeks. <laughs> you say, oh, Brother Beam, you, you, you wouldn't do that. Oh, yeah. You think too highly of yourself, brother. You think too highly of yourself. You're going to get criticized. And you better get used to being criticized as a child of God. Because if you don't, you're going to quit before you get to the end. Criticism makes people give up and quit. Now you say, Brother Bemis, what should you do about it? I'll give you a great verse. One time I was reading over in the book of Ecclesiastes. Take your Bible and turn to Ecclesiastes. And God gave me this verse and it was a great encouragement to my heart as I read this in Ecclesiastes chapter 7. About criticism. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And let's read verse 21. And it says. Also. Ecclesiastes 7 21. Also. Take no heed. Unto all words. All words. You listen to some. But don't, let, don't take too much heed to all words. That are spoken. Least thou hear. That thy servant. 
curse thee, in case some church member gives you down the road. Curse you. For oftentimes also thy own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. Now you say, how'd you get a blessing out of that? And you say, explain it. I just caught myself sitting around the kitchen table and giving you down the road to no end. I'd be sitting down there and my wife would be there and I'd say, Louise, bam, bam, I'd just give you down the road, you know. Bam, 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 bam. I'd say, Louise, they don't do this and, 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 and you know, and this is bad about it, and this is bad, and this and that, they don't do this. And, and then pretty soon I was up in my study and the Lord says, uh, they might be saying the same thing about you. <laughs> And if you listen too hard, you're going to hear them say it. But don't get too bothered about it because you said the same thing about them. Amen? That's what Ecclesiastes chapter 7 just said. So, brother, I don't pay too much attention to it because I've said some pretty rough things about some of you. <laughs> and you say, how do you figure that? I figure that criticism is just part of life, brother. That's just part of life. You know what it'll do to you? It'll wake you up sometime, criticism will. If the boss comes by and says, get busy or I'm going to fire you, that ought to wake you up. Sometimes criticism is good. But don't ever quit under criticism. But when somebody comes up and criticizes your witness and says, I wouldn't do it that way, you know what I say? I say, can you beat my? If you can do better than I am, have at it, fella. Have at it. One time somebody criticized Billy, uh, 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 D.L. Moody for all his uh, his errors in his grammar. And I, I could probably give D.L. Moody a good run for his money. <laughs> and they criticized D.L. Moody about his errors in grammar. And D.L. Moody stuck his tongue out like this. <laughs> and he said, see that right there? I'm using mine for the Lord Jesus Christ, which you using yours for. See? And so when somebody criticizes you, brother, just put it back on them, but don't make it make you quit. Somebody criticizes you for handing out tracts, brother, you know what you ought to do? You ought to hand out ten times more. Amen. Amen. Somebody comes along and says, you don't do it the right way, you say, show me a better way. Show me a better way. But don't you quit doing right when somebody criticizes you. One day I was on the street corner and I was out there preaching and I had a lady across the street and she was handing out tracts. She was sitting there handing out tracts like this and, and handing out gospel tracts. And I thought, good boy, that lady's doing good. Hey, Amen. Praise the Lord. She's going good. And another preacher in town came by and walked up to that street corner. And that other preacher, I seen him talking to this lady in the church. And they were talking back and forth and talking and talking. And they, I, I kept preaching, you know, and handing out tracts and trying to win somebody, you know, and trying to get them going. And I, I kept looking over there and I saw that that preacher stayed over there quite a while. And then when he got through, he'd come across the street and talk to me. And you know how they are. They're chicken hearted. They, yep, they, they, they got yellow up and down on their back. They won't say nothing to me. They eat chicken, but they really give her over the coals about handing out tracts. Then he walked on down the road. And he didn't tell me that, but he didn't say nothing to me. He didn't, nice and sweet. How you doing, Mr. Bemis? How you doing? Fine, 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 fine. How's your church going? Oh, going fine. How's your church going? Oh, going fine, right? He walked on down the road, you know. And then I saw that lady a couple of days later, and I said, what did he say to you? He said, oh, he talked to me a good 30 minutes on why I shouldn't be handing out tracts on the street corner. And you know something? That woman didn't come out again and had out tracks. Not again did she come. What wrong? Somebody criticized her. A Jezebel in pants <laughs> criticized her. Hey, I have criticized her. You say, what well, I'm criticism. Criticism. Brother, if you're going to keep on for God and keep on and keep on and keep on and not quit, you had better learn to take some criticism. You better learn to take some criticism. Because it's going to come your way. Got to learn to take it. Learn to take it. Criticism will make folks quit. You say, Brother Bemis, what's important? If it's just natural to quit, why can't we quit now and then? Because, brother, at the minute that you quit, is about the minute that a hundred people are going to be looking at you 
And that's the most important time not to quit. Because when the devil is pouring on the pressure for you to quit, that's when it's absolutely important that you don't quit. Because you don't see all the things that are coming in and you don't see all the things that are around you involving. And you don't see it coming in like this. You'll see it at the judgment. At the judgment you'll say, Oh, I wish I hadn't have quit then. Don't you quit. Because brother, Doc, the time you quit, that's when it's the absolutely 100% the most important time that you don't. But God's people give up and quit. They do. They have a natural thing in them. I tell you, it's so important that you don't quit God and quit serving and doing right and quit doing what God wants you to do. It's so important that, in fact, it is the qualification of the judgment seat of Christ. According to Luke chapter 19, turn to it. Luke chapter 19, Luke chapter 19, <coughs> and verse 17 says, And he saith unto him, well, thy good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Faithful. Faithful. Brother, don't you quit. Don't you quit. You say, but Brother Bemis, I just, and I just get criticized this way, and I get criticized that way, and I get criticized that way. And every time I turn around, I get criticized. Keep on. You know, son, you know when a woman wants to give up and quit her marriage is when her husband criticizes her. You say, say it, I'll say it like this. Here's the woman. She comes in and she fixes her husband a good meal. And she got the house all cleaned up real good and she fixes herself up real good and he comes in and gripes and complains about everything and never gives her a thanks for it. You know what she feels like doing? She feels like quitting because he won't thank her. It won't be appreciated about it. And brother, a woman to take just so much of it and so much, and then she'll just say, I quit. No, it's always, every, it just gives me the lamb. Now, I admit that us men, sometimes we take a lot of things for granted. And I admit that lots of times we don't give you the thanks that you ladies should get. I admit that. We don't thank you every time you do something. We don't. I don't thank my wife every time she does something. Once in a while, I do. <laughs> But I'll tell you something, I need to do it more, and some of you need to do it more. Amen? And when she doesn't get no thanks, she feels like quitting. She feels like quitting. And I'll tell you something, you feel like quitting in God, in the Christian life, in the Christian walk, when nobody comes up and, and gives you a thank, and all in it is criticism, 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 criticism. I, I, every once in a while, I'll preach a good message. I don't know when it is. But every once in a while, I'll preach a good message. And I'll walk out the front door and I'll be thinking, well, if anybody's going to thank me this morning or, or tell me it was good this morning, now ought to be, it was a good message this morning. And nobody will say a word. <laughs> Just walk right on out. Nobody will say a word. I'll, now I'll say well, maybe one no good. <laughs> you know, I'll think, well, I'm, maybe that was a dud, you know. <laughs> and then I'll go to my wife and I'll say, what'd you think of that? She says, I didn't hear you. <laughs> you know, so she no help. And you know, sometimes everybody is just a great encouragement to you when somebody gives you a little word of encouragement. Come along and say, brother, I, you're doing a good job. I see you've been out uh, on the street witnessing and out trucks and I see you've been uh, uh, reading your Bible and study, you're doing a good job. Uh, praise God and give you a word of encouragement along in serving God. And not always time criticizing, criticizing, getting down the road. No, some, you can find something wrong with every other Christian. If you look hard enough, you can find something wrong with them to criticize them in. You say, oh, Brother Bemis, you couldn't find something wrong with me. I can find at least 10 things. <laughs> I could. And if I was dumb enough, I could even tell you. <laughs> You say, dummy, I would tell you if that'd be dumb, but I would help you out none. Once in a while, I criticize you on some things, but it's just to help you out and encourage you and strengthen you. Many people give up and quit when there's a word of criticism. Number two, look at chapter 19, 1 uh, Kings chapter 19, and look at verse 3. 
And when he saw that he arose and went for his life, oh, Elijah ran when old Jezebel come down there and criticized him, and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and he left his servant. You see, now how did Elijah fail? He failed. You know a thing that will make you give up and quit is failure. Failure will make you quit when you fail. You say, how did he figure that? How did Elijah fail? Well, Elijah brought down fire from heaven down on Carmel. I mean, he brought down that fire and burned up the sacrifice and everything else. And Elijah made great power from God. You say, how did he fail? He ran from a woman. He ran from Jezebel. Why did Elijah run from Jezebel? What a thing to run from. Run from a woman. Some woman sits down and writes him out an old letter, and he gets frustrated and runs. He failed. He failed. You don't think Elijah failed? What do you think God Almighty looked down there and saw Elijah the Tishbabite, who brought down fire from heaven, running from a letter from a lady? I wouldn't call her a lady. Call her Jezebel. That's what her name was. You see, what did he run for? He failed. He failed, but he failed. A failure! I'll tell you something else. Failure will make you run too. Failure will make you quit too. You know when God's people give up and quit? Because they go out and they fail. 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 I'll tell you when you feel like quitting, when you fail your marriage. You say, I'm a good husband. And then you fail and you're not a good husband. You know what you want to do? You want to quit. You want to quit. I'll tell you something else. When you're a mother, and then you, you come up and you fail as a mother, and you're not a good mother, and you're a failure, and you know it. You know what you want to do? You want to quit. You want to quit. I'll tell you another time you want to fail. When you come up and you just fail, and you mess up miserably, and you get and you fail on the job, and fail on the job, and fail on the job, and you get fired off of this job and fired off that job and you lose this job and quit that job. You know something? You want to quit. Because you've been a failure. You know what make you quit? Being a failure. You say, Brother Bemis, how on earth do you get victory over that? The only way you can get victory over that, brother, is leave the results up to God. Do the best you can and leave the results up to God. You say, I'm a failure's mother. Do the best you can and leave the results up to God. That's the only way you can get, get victory over it. You say, I'm a failure as a husband. Do the best you can and leave the results up to God. You say, I'm a failure as a wife. Do the best you can and leave the results up to God. That's the only way you get victory over that. Is do the best you can and leave the results up to God. You know something, when come on up my, in school, I failed so many times I'd have F, 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 F failed on the bottom. <laughs> F, 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 D, 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 A. And I always would look at that A. It'd be a gym. <laughs> <laughs> or shop, you know. <laughs> Reading, writing, spelling, arithmetic, F, 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 fail. Brother, I tell you, I've learned how to do one thing in life, and I've learned how to fail. If you learn how to fail, if you don't learn how to fail, brother, you haven't learned a great lesson in life, because a great lesson in life is learning how to fail. Learning how to fail. You need to come through again, brother, and learn how to fail. You ought to learn that. That's a great lesson, brother, is learning how to fail. And I'll tell you something. Elijah failed God and he failed and failed because he got his eyes off Jesus Christ. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our feet. You know when you fail? When you get your eyes off Jesus. Get your eyes off him. Then you fail. Then you want to give up and quit. Brother, you know what I say? I say if you come along and you fail and you fail it miserably, get up and go on. Yes, a preacher, you don't know how many times I've failed. Fail all the way to the judgment seat of Christ, and then God will say, here's a fellow that kept on going. Here's a fellow that kept on going. He failed here, and he failed here, but he got up. He failed here, and he failed here, but he got up. The question is, how many times have you gotten up? How many times have you gotten up? Get up! 
man. Get up. Go on. But don't quit. Nobody likes a quitter. Nobody likes a quitter. You get out there and you run the race. You know, you know when a man runs a race and you run it? Nobody likes a quitter. They want the man to run all the way to the end, even if he's crawling on his hands and knees. They want him to run all the way to the end. Nobody likes a quitter. All right. Point number three. I want you to notice that Elijah, uh, the Tishbapite, I want you to notice in chapter 18 now this time, and look at verse 46. It says, And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. 18 miles. 18 miles, old Elijah gets up and starts running. Out he goes. Out he goes. He's running before the king here. Yeah. Running out there before his chariot. And he's running, 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 running. 18 miles. Now I want you to look down at chapter 19. And I want you to look at uh, verse 5. And it says, And he lay and slept under a juniper tree. You know what's wrong with Elijah? He's just as tired as he can be. Dead tired. Too much weariness. You know what? Another thing to make you want to give him quick is too tired, too weary. Too much of a load, too much of responsibility. I mean, the load gets up there, and the responsibility gets up there, load gets up there, and you get tired and tired and weary, and you want to quit. You want to quit. I've known of many a person get out there in a business somewhere, and the business get piled up here, and the piled up here, and the responsibility piled up. All of a sudden, nervous breakdown, heart attack. Quit. Too much responsibility. No rest. No rest. Just go, go, go. Now, if I probably go out of the ministry, that may be my problem. I don't know. But I believe, brother, I mean, some Christians, they never get, they, you know what it is? Their goal is set so low that they reach their goal and they never fail because they always reach their goal because their goal is always too low. And some Christians, they reach their goal to set so high, they never do make it. They get the goal set way up there. They daydreamers, you know. Way up there so high, they ain't never going to make it. They, not, they always fail. Because the goal set too high. Go to daydreamers. Now I have a, a song I sing about those. You know some Christians out of way? They talk about all the big things that's going to happen. All the great big things. And none of it ever comes back. I got an old song I used to sing. Beautiful dreamer, wake unto me. You daydreaming, man. Daydreaming. Set your goals there where you can reach them. Set your goals there where they're reality, where they're real, and something you can get done and something you can do. Don't you say, well, I'm going to be a missionary somewhere. And it's too late and doing it. You'll never be a missionary now. Set your goals where the reality. Something you can do. Something you can get accomplished for God. Don't set impossible goals. Don't daydream in your mind and your head and your heart. Say, Lord, I can do this. I'm going to do that. Lord, I can do this. I'm going to do that. Lord, this I can do. And to do it, set you some goals that are real realistic. Again... A lot of God's people fail because of verse 91. And verse 90, I mean verse 19, verse 1 says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with how he had slain all the prophets of the sword. Now Ahab told Jezebel all that who had done? All that Elijah had done. How come he didn't tell him? All what God had done. How come he didn't tell her that? He only told her all that Elijah had done. Then Elijah called the fire down from heaven. And was hoping that would hit uh, Ahab. And he ran before the chariot of Ahab. Run 18 miles before the chariot. Of, and he was hoping that would bring revival to Ahab. And it never brought revival to Ahab. Ahab didn't get a revival. Jezebel never got a revival either. 
And old Elijah was hoping, saying, man, if I could just get the king, if I could just get the king, I'd have somebody. The king's in, tr in charge of stuff. The king's in control. And if I could get the man in ahead, I could go somewhere. And he knew that if he got the man in charge, he, he would uh, go someplace. You know, if you could get the president of this company, you'd have something. If you could get the president of the United States, you'd have something. If you could get the king of the country, you'd have something. But Elijah didn't get it. And Elijah says, well, I just didn't make it. And you know what? When you don't see the results that you want to see, you give up and quit. When you don't see the results that you want to see, you know what you do? You want to give up and quit. When you don't see those results. You know Jonah's is the same way. Jonah got down in the mouth, they say. Yeah, the mouth of the whale. <laughs> And he felt like quitting. He said he wanted to die too. And old Jonah just felt like dying right on the spot. You know what was wrong with Jonah? He didn't see the results that he wanted to see. He wanted God to come down and just wipe out the city of Nineveh. Just wipe it off the face of the map. And the results didn't come. That's what he wanted to see. He didn't get no results though. Brethren, I'll tell you something. Maybe you don't win all the souls that you'd like to win. But don't quit. And maybe you don't win them as often as you'd like to win them. But don't quit. I know some Christians that haven't won a soul yet. I'll tell you something, brother. Don't quit trying to win them. Don't quit trying to win them. Because if you keep on, one of these days you'll say, hey, that's what I've been doing wrong. That's what I've been doing wrong. You know, well, I went fishing many times before I ever caught a fish. Man, I'd go out there in the river and I'd throw that thing in, I'd throw it in, and I'd say, now how come I can't catch a fish? I'd pull it in, I'd throw it out and pull it in, and throw it out and pull it in, throw it out, pull it in, throw it out, pull it in. I had a worm on there too. <laughs> throw it out, pull it in, throw it out, pull it in. I couldn't catch a fish. Finally, I said, what's wrong? I said, I'm going to go with somebody that's catching fish. So I started going with somebody who started catching fish. And he said, what you need is this. He started telling me, he said, you do it just like I'm doing. He said, you went down there and when you didn't catch fish, there ain't no fish down there. Wouldn't be no fish down there. No, 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 you catch them. You went the wrong place. I went over here, go over there, and find out how to catch them. Brother, I'll tell you the same thing. You may not see the results you want to see, and it may not be exactly what you want to see, but don't quit. Maybe your Christian life is not up on the higher plane that you'd like it to be. And you always say, Lord, I wish I could get on a higher plane. And you're shooting for a higher plane all your Christian life. You say, preacher, Lord, I'm not up on that higher plane. Don't quit shooting, boy. Don't quit shooting, boy. Brother, shoot for a higher plane in your Christian life all the time. The, Bible, the song says, a higher plane that I would have, Lord, set my feet on higher ground. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. You know what that song is about? That song is about, brother, you're getting spiritually more fellowship with God all the time, and you're getting closer and closer and closer in fellowship with him all the time. You may not see the results you want to see, but don't quit. Don't quit. All right, again. Look at uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 19 and look at verse 10 this time. Children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and cast down their altars and slain thy prophets with the sword. Now watch it. And I, even I alone, am left. And they seek my life and take it away. You know when you feel like quitting? When you think you're all alone. It is I alone. When you think you're all alone. If you like quitting, nobody but you. Only me, Lord, I'm the only one. Brother, when you think you're the only one around, and you are the only one, you know what? I got news for you. Look at verse uh, 18 in the chapter, and it says, Yet I have left 7,000 in Israel. When you think you're all alone and God has left you, 
Remember, there's always another 7,000 that haven't bowed to Baal and kissed it. But you ain't all alone. And if you're here this morning and you're saved, Jesus Christ said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Jesus is always with you. You ever heard Christians pray, Lord, be with us this morning? It always gets me. Lord, be with us this morning and don't leave us. I keep I thinking, well, what's he praying like that for? The Lord ain't going to leave you. What do you think the Lord's going to leave you or something? Lord, be with us and don't leave us. Well, what are you praying that way for? But the Lord ain't going to leave you. He's always going to be with you. You know what? I, I know what you mean by it. You mean, Lord, bless us and give us the blessings this morning. Make the showers come down on us this morning and work this morning. I know what you mean, but you're like me. You need to say what you mean. <laughs> the Lord ain't going to leave you. Yeah, he, he ain't going to be alone. You know what God's people think? They think sometimes they just think they're all but themselves. They get to the place in their Christian life and they think their husbands don't understand. Their husbands don't love. There's just them by themselves. And just me and the Lord. Just me and the Lord. Just me and him. Well, I realize that there's a time that there's just you and the Lord. And I realize a time that nobody can take the heart of a place that, that, that God can take. I realize that. And every Christian is when you get down to the basic nitty gritty, that's all there is really is between you and the Lord anyway. I mean, your husband can't come inside you. He can't completely understand you. I bet you them things that your husband say. Amen? And I bet you wives would say about your husband, I don't understand. I don't know why he does that. Amen. And I'll tell you, brother, you're not all alone. There's plenty that's gone through the same thing you've gone through, and they're going through it exactly like you're going through it, and you're not unique. You're not by yourself. You're not all alone. Plenty of folks have gone through it, and plenty of them are going right straight down the same road you're going down right now. You say, oh, Brother Bemis, not a whole bunch of them. A whole bunch of them. You say, like I'm going up, just like you're going now. You say, with the things I got, with the things you got. You say, but nobody understands. There's plenty of Christians, if you'd find them, been down the same road you've been down and going through the same thing you're going through. In the same way that you're doing it. In the same method, with the same circumstances. You say, do you have that way? Sure, yeah. Sure it does. And I'll tell you something. If you can find him, you can have some real fellowship and joy. And God will say, hey, you're not all alone. There's lots of folks just like you. You're never alone. Unless you're unsaved. Unless you're unsaved. Now, if you're unsaved and you're going to hell, I'll tell you something. You can go through it all. All by yourself. The Lord Jesus Christ is not with you. And you'll go through it all alone. All by yourself. Because Jesus Christ is not with you. All right, last of all, I want to say there in verse 19, uh, in chapter 19, verse 9, I want you to notice in verse 9 it says, And he came thither into a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? What doest thou here, Elijah? Now notice also in verse 13 he says, And what doest thou here, Elijah? You know what Elijah was? He was out of place. You say, what do you mean by that? How does a guy get discouraged? I'll tell you something. You get discouraged when you go your own way instead of God's way. You get discouraged. Boy, you talk about a missionary to get discouraged. You want to see a missionary get discouraged? Have a missionary go down to South America who God has not called him and he goes down there anyway and see how discouraged he gets. Boy, the discouragement comes to no end. You know why? Because he didn't go God's way. He didn't go God's way. And I'll tell you something, brethren and sisters, when you say, Lord, I want to go this way, 
and you go your own way, you'll be the discouraged and miserable Christian all your life because you went your own way. You know, the best, the worst thing in the world to do is just stay at home and write and complain and bellyache and feel sorry for yourself. You know what God said? God said in verse uh, uh, 15, he said, And the Lord said to him, Go return into the way of the wilderness. He said, Get up and go, Elijah. Get up and go. Now I'll say, brethren, if you get miserable and you can't get to the place where you feel like quitting and you're just getting sick and tired of the whole mess, I'm saying, don't quit. Don't quit. I want to close with an illustration. One time, I heard a guy preach and he talked about this thing. And on the wall of his house, he has, he's an artist, he loves to draw. On the wall of his house, he has a picture. He's a real artist. He's a sure enough artist. And he loves to draw. I don't know if he drew the picture or, or where he got the picture or how it come to be. But he had on the wall of his house, he had a picture of a boy about 19 years old sitting on a bench playing with a baseball uniform on. And he had his helmet in his hand like this, and he's sitting on that bench. And in that picture, it had one word over to the side, two words, and the words, one word said, I quit. That was that 19-year-old football player, and he was sitting there, and he said, I quit. He had a football helmet in his hand. But then down in the corner of that picture, whoever draw that thing had some real insight with the Lord. Down in the corner, it had a picture of the cross of Calvary in Golgotha. And had the three crosses down there. And it said down there, it said, I didn't. I didn't. Now, brethren, Jesus Christ never quit. Jesus Christ never quit. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, Consider him that endured such contradictions as sinners, Against himself, lest you be weary and faint in your own mind. He never quit. For if he had quit, we'd be in a mess. He could have quit. He had a reason to quit. But he didn't quit. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. Keep on serving God. You don't see the results you want to see. You don't see as many people get saved as you want to see. You don't get the spiritual ground that you want to be on. Brethren, don't quit. Keep on keeping on. All eyes closed and all heads bowed. Christians praying this morning. I say to you this morning, don't give up and quit. You get weary, you get tired, maybe the load's more than you can buy. Maybe somebody's criticized you down here and criticized you over there. And they gripe and complain about you. And you're trying to do your best. You're doing what you can do. And somebody comes along and bad mouths you. You say, but preacher, I just feel like quitting. So pal, I just, I just sick and tired. Don't quit. Jesus never quit. He never quit. Don't you quit. Jesus don't want you to quit. He wants you to keep on. Be faithful. You say, preacher, I'm so tired. I'm so weary. Get some rest. Come apart. Take some time off. Get a rest. Get your vacation. Take some time off. Get away. Be alone. Do something. But don't quit. Don't quit. Sometimes Christians come along. They get to bragging about how good they are and get bragging about how much they've done. Some other Christians say, well, I ain't doing what he's doing. I ain't doing that much. Don't you get looking at somebody else. You keep your eyes on Jesus. Get your eyes off of them. Don't you look at what somebody else is doing. You do what you can do. You do your part. You serve God. If a man said and you give account of himself, you're not going to give account of somebody else. You give account of yourself.
Don't quit serving God faithfully. Be faithful in serving God. Be dependable. But don't quit it. How many of you here say, Brother Bemis, I got some things in my own heart and in my own life. The devil's been wanting to make me quit here. I want you to pray for me. Would you raise your hand? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Several hands this morning. I want every Christian here this morning to pray for the hands who was raised. If you didn't see their hand, would you just pray for them just now? Send up a prayer to the Lord and say, Lord, all these hands that was raised this morning, I want them not to quit. And you pray for them right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, every hand that was raised this morning, Lord, you know the circumstances, you know their lives, you know their hearts, and you know the, the things that are across their paths that was making them want to quit, Father. Lord, help them to look under thee and keep their eyes on thee and get their eyes off of other people. And Lord, they may not have a, 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 a big work and they may not have a great fancy and they may not have fire come down from heaven like Elijah. But Lord, they got a little job in this little place. Lord, their life counts for thee. Lord, maybe, they can, they're, maybe they're not the best mother there is in the world or, or the best husband there is in the world. But Lord, help them to do what they can, Father. Help them to do their job. Help them to be faithful in doing it, Father. Lord, knowing that it's a judgment seat of Christ, that it's in our labor is not in vain. Lord, you said in the word of God, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Lord, you said that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. We know that there comes a time that it will be all made right, Father. It will all be made right and it will all be made just. We know that time's coming. And we trust it will be very soon. In Jesus' name I pray. And for his sake. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand this morning. As we sing hymn number 382 in your hymnal. Number 382.
in Jesus' name and for his sake.